Kyle, I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you, you know what I mean, taking your knowledge, taking your experiences and everything that you've went through and endured, man, and creating something like this. Because again, oftentimes we got it in our mind. We want to do something. We just don't know how to do it. And now we got somebody literally teaching us, showing us, right, gave us to God exactly how to do it. And then gonna say, you know what, a couple of you guys, I'm gonna actually, you know, cover the cost as well. So with that, bro, um, you know, I think everybody in the audience, man, is gonna get a copy. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Um, of Deshaun's Road to Redemption. So super dope about that. I know I need my copy. And here's your copy, man. Away yes, to fail, man. Swap book out. swap. Off the swap, man. Appreciate you, Love, baby. Love, all Appreciate time. Appreciate it, man, dog. Yes, sir. Let's get it. What questions we got, man? That was a lot of info, man. We went through it. I appreciate y'all sticking with us and banging through. Um, yeah, we're going we gonna to stay on. We got some questions maybe from the audience, but obviously we got a live audience in here, man. So, so give me some feedback, man. Give me some thoughts, some comments, some so, questions. We open right now, man. What y'all got? So uh, I, uh, I want write to write a book about my life before I actually haven't started it. Well, first off, start with a strong outline. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what part of your life do you want to talk about your whole life? Do you want to talk about a specific experience in your life? Do you want it to be a success story? Do you want it to be, you know, find out the point of view that you want to write first. Get that established and then use that as your guideline to keep going. You know what I mean? Uh, what I would do is I would break it up into portions. If it's going to be a whole life book, I would say I'm going to spend this amount of time writing from my early memory into high school. And then I'm going to go from high school into after, to graduation. Like, break it up in points so you're able to cover all of your life in one. Or if you just want to write about a specific experience, specify that and then work in between. Good, good. I know a question we had online was, did you see yourself 10 years ago being in this position and, and being an author? Hell no. Nah. What, what 10 years ago? What's this? This 2022? Nah, nah, nah. 2012, <laughs> man. You know, uh, I was, man, I was still, you know, I was in the streets 2012, man. You know, I thought I was going to be living next to Pablo Escobar 10 years ago. <laughs> that was my mind frame. And so, no. But I'm definitely blessed that God works so mysteriously that he took my journey and he blew me in this direction. And, 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 and I'm going to accept his way over mine and I'm going to keep pushing, bro. So, yeah, yeah no, Dope. not at all. Dope. Uh, I know you're talking about that's how you kind of start off the manuscript. Is, uh, is the movie kind of still in the works for you, a major goal for you? Absolutely. That's the ultimate goal. I'm from Oakland, but I located to Atlanta. And so... What we doing is, man, we uh, we building our funding up so we can build out our own studio and shoot our own content. And, you know, hopefully one day one of y'all content, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, definitely putting the visuals behind it and going into that industry is the ultimate goal for all I do is pen publishing. So be on the lookout for that, man, sooner than later. We gonna need some, we gonna need some actors too, man. Come on, man. Who want to get their Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, Denzel yeah, Washington yeah, on, bro? It's all good. Let's go. Let's go. What other questions, man? Any other questions? I got, a, I got another one. Um, I write a lot of poetry. How does that? How do you go about that? Same way. Just write it. Yeah. Write it. Get it to us, and let us let us help you edit it and get it to the masses. Like, uh, if you look in the back, man. You know, uh, one of my guys, man. He got a, a book called uh, Prison Poetry. I, yeah, and so, man, what he did, well, he took a bunch of publications from um, people who were currently in prison, you know what I'm saying, and took their poetry, and he just, the way he structured it, like, each page was just a different excerpt, and so it all aligned with their experience, and so uh, we're going to get your information, we're going to make sure you get one, and you can just use that as a guide as you write your poetry. For sure, I, I got composition notebooks full of poetry at home. That's dope, bro. We want to get that to the world, man, because you that's don't know, man, who going to... That, that's a stream of income. That's several books. That's several books, bro. So, yeah, we're going we to get that for him for sure. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. Question, yes, sir. Um, so my question is, did it take... 
obviously like different subjects in school would like dictate if you would want to write or want to read. But do you guys say like even then, like in school, did you feel like you was a reader or a writer? Like, because a lot of people, I don't know too many readers. You know? Yeah. So it's just like for y'all to be writers and readers, you know, like was that something that y'all already had in your mind? Like, you know what, I want to, I want to tell my story, like. No, nah. I never wanted nobody to know my business. Word. You know, you I mean, as you can relate to where we come from, the less people know, the better off we is being successful in what we're trying to do. And so I never wanted to expose even that hidden skill to people. And it's sad because the communities we grow up in, we dim our light to appease the masses. I didn't even want people to know I liked it to read or that I knew how to write. That's right. But those were subjects that I did excel in, you know, and I and I and I was interested in, and I never knew that I would use it one day. And so um, that's another thing. If that was something that you were interested in, then then you can always rekindle that flame now. And I already know how you guys met, but just in curiosity for the guys that didn't know, how did y'all meet? Man, I met Tone in the seminar, man. Uh, we both in this financial literacy group called Recession Proof. Shout out RPX, man. And, uh, you know, him 500, you know, he the one who put it all together. He had this event, little small event, and, and Tone spoke, and he was speaking about this program. And I just saw the passion that this man had, bro. And I thought he had did time before because it was, I felt it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I gotta go holler at him. And so I'm in the audience like, y'all, while he doing his thing. So I went and found him, like, bro, I respect what you're doing. You know, I'm an instant fan, bro. And any way I could be a part of it, I'm willing to do it. I, you know, let him know what I was doing, a little bit of my background. And the rest is history, man. And, bro, everything he ever told me, he been a man of his word, whether it was directly on what he was gonna do with me or his aspirations on what he was gonna do for y'all. And, you know, my thing is when a person take your house, your car, your clothes, all you got left is your name. That's it. That's the one thing you should stand on to the day you die. And the fact that everything he ever said came to light, I just gained respect more and more. And I'ma always deliver and come through when he called me, bro, just because of shit like this. Yeah, love. <clears throat> but watch that, you just see what he just said? He heard me sharing my story, or you know, my aspirations, which inspired him. We chalked, chopped it up, he then shared his story. Boom, that connection. See what I'm saying? You see why I was so important? Y'all probably also always hear elevator speech. Have your elevator speech ready. You know what I'm saying? About you. You get so tired, of, you know, people all through your life tell you who you are and what you should be and who you not. And sometimes, I mean, I'm on stage. You probably only, I was only on stage a couple minutes. Right. All right, that wasn't my platform. I got on stage, I got the mic, I got a chance to, I think I had to, a minute and a half maybe to share what we doing. And in that 90 seconds, he said, oh, bye, I got it. Now we connected right after that, we probably talked five minutes. He shared what he doing, boom, now we here. You know what I mean, year, year and a half later. You see what I'm saying? We got a chance to build because we was ready to share our story. Your network determine your network, man. You know, I, I, as men and then as men who have backgrounds that where we come from, we're naturally territorial, we're naturally standoffish. We size each other up, you know, for whatever reason. And so it's difficult to just step out that comfort zone and, hey man, look, my name is Cal, man, this is what I'm doing, you know? But the more you network, you never know what opportunity and what door gonna open up. And another thing, man, the time he utilized, he made sure he did something that stood out. I'm talking to somebody next, next to him out here, easy money. Yeah. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So he had something that caught my attention. So, you know, whatever that, that that thing is with you, don't be afraid to share it, man. Don't be afraid to stand on that, man, because that's what's gonna separate you from the man next to you who might have the same skill set as you. Yeah. I wanted to touch on something, because you, you mentioned him 500. Yeah. And uh, more recently, I followed him. Okay. Because of Wallow 267. Okay. And I followed, like, all I had was Wallow was a comedian. Right. Then they introduced me about watching him, about him 500, about uh, Wall Street Trapper, yeah. uh, uh, liabilities over at, I mean, like, assets over, uh, yeah. yeah. So then, I, that's all I follow on social media. Yeah. I don't even post pictures. Mm -hmm. So this kind of goes into my question, like uh, if I wanted to promote uh, my book, do I need to be active on social media? Like, it's cause like, 
kind of you said like I could kind of shy away from telling my business. Right. I kind of grew into. I, I used to be all over social media. Now I am kind of more shy to kind of stand off as yeah. on social media. But mm. Do I need to have be active and build that up to if I wanted to push my uh, my literature? So <clears throat> I, I kind of chime in because um, I used to shy away from social media. Um, and part of the reason is because, you know, my life, I always try to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. So everybody on social media, like, I'm going to try to figure out how to not be on social media. You feel me? Until I realize it ain't a fad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at it's this point, way. it's a way of life. Right. You feel me? Now, how you utilize social media. That's the, that's what's that's the thing. You right. just posting pictures, of, you know what I mean? You kicking in and having fun. Or you like, nah, I'm going to use IG or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever as my as business because the thing about social media is it allows us to reach the masses the reason why a lot of us aren't successful or as successful as we want to be is because don't nobody know about you let that sink in you know what i'm saying they don't know how can you sell something to somebody and they don't know it exists right. you see what i'm saying and so you might have a dopest story they don't know about it you might have a dopest idea, you might have the dopest invention, you might have the next dopest phone. But if ain't nobody know about it, if they never seen it, how, how the hell would they buy it? And so what social media allows you to do is to get in front of hundreds and thousands and millions of people, you know what I'm saying, that you would never been able to do without social media. And so for me, I realize it and I say, I gotta be on it. And I utilize it more for the work that I'm doing in business functions. Obviously, you got a personal side, so people want to see that personal, so you got to throw that on there. But I'm sharing more of the work that we're doing so people can follow that movement and get behind it. But I, I definitely think social media uh, is, a, is a huge platform. It's not the only platform, but it's a platform where you can, you can get out, you know what I'm saying, to a, 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 a wide variety of people quickly. It's definitely a tool that, if used properly, can really um, expedite your growth in whatever you're trying to do. Uh, originally, it was uncomfortable for me because, like, I'm like, bro, I don't want nobody in my business. You know, um, I've never been shy, but I've never been one to volunteer stuff to people. And so, um, and then using it in the right way. And just to be honest and transparent, that's something I still am navigating with daily. Like, my presence on social media is nowhere as near as what I would like it to be. But it start with things like this. And so, um, but yeah, man, that's the new wave. It's not a fad, you know what I'm saying? And so, if you interested in, you know, kicking off what you're trying to do, I strongly advise you take that route. Mm -hmm. And that's some good people to, to they be connected with too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any other questions? We good? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh, man, appreciate you. All right, good.